Welcome to the lectures on deep reinforcement learning. In this video, I will discuss the difference between model-based and model-free reinforcement learning. So this is a maze task here where the target is hidden in the middle. And now the question is, we have learned this, the agent knows how to go there. The question is, what happens if suddenly you change the location of the target. The target is no longer here where it used to be, it's now here. Well, in the previous video, I've shown that these tasks can be learned and uh, the, with the standard location of the target and the critic develops this value map. The value map has a gradient and the arrows in this gradient map indicate direction where you have to go in a Q learning setting, in a Sachsa setting. The arrows are in the actor critic, they are implemented on the actor side, but it's the same idea. At each location, you know in which direction you have to go. And in this direction, you go here, over here, you go there, and here you go to the left. The agent in these standard reinforcement learning algorithms, be it SARSA, be it Q learning, be it TD learning, be it policy gradient, being at the actor critic, the agent just learns the directions. It just learns at each state which action to take. It has no notion about the layout of the environment. And this is why this is called model free. Model free means that the agent does not learn a model of the environment. Now, the term is a bit strange because, of course, the reinforcement learning setup is implemented in model, for example, in the actor critic model. Nevertheless, the term model free is standard in the field, and it doesn't mean that there is no model of reinforcement learning. It means that the reinforcement learning agent does not learn a model of the environment. A model-based reinforcement learning approach is that the agent does also learn a model of the environment. Now, what's a model of the environment? For example, if the agent after some time knows that state S1 is a neighbor of state S17, or if it knows that action A5 in state 7 will lead to state S8. Or if it has some notion of distances, like the distance from state 5 to state 15 is 10 meters. So all these are notions about the environment. To make it, to, to describe the distinction between model-based and model-free a bit further, Let's go back to our standard discrete graphs. A model-free agent, it just learns the Q values. And it's sufficient to note the Q values up here and down there, and maybe here and maybe there and maybe there. And then it can plan the actions just looking on the Q values that come up next. The policy is based on the Q values. You don't need to have any notion of neighborhoods. In particular, you don't know the transition probabilities. Now, the world is characterized by these transition probabilities. If I take action A1 in state S, I'm very likely to end up in state S prime. This encodes a neighborhood bit, uh, relation between states S and S prime, and they are linked by the action A1. So model-based essentially means the agent learns the Q values and also the transition probabilities. In fact, if it knows the transition probabilities and the reward locations, it can reconstruct the Q values algorithmically. Now, what are the advantages of such a model-based? Well, obviously, if the reward scheme changes, then 
you just have to find the new location of the reward once and then you can recalculate the Q values with the Bellman equation because you have a model of the world. You have a model of these transition probabilities. What's the likelihood to go from S to S prime under action A? And that means also that the agent can explore potential future paths in its mind. What I mean it's sort of it can play through potential futures without actually performing the action. And that means it can also plan an action path. Moreover, once it has found after switch of the reward location, the reward again, it can update the Q values in the background. Remember, Bellman equation implements a consistency condition between Q values at different states. So you can dream about action sequences, run them in the model, not in reality, and use this to implement this consistency condition. Now, just a side remark, some of the most famous applications of reinforcement learning have been for games such as chess and go. And these are model-based implementations by nature because the agent knows from the beginning the rules of the game and he can it can therefore plan the action path one or two or three steps ahead. So he does not even have to learn the model. The model of the environment is the rules of the game that tell you which states are related to each other, which states are which future states are accessible from the current state. Here is sort of a human version of a experiment that was actually performed uh, some years ago. It's a psychophysics experiment. You can also look at brain activities at the same time, but just look at the experiment. Yes, the, each state is characterized by a fractal image and then you as a player, you can either press the left or the right button. And then the agent, uh, the, the environment is such that if you press the left button, you either see this fractal or that fractal as the next image. And here are the branching probabilities implemented by the algorithm in the background, which you don't know. But now in the first session, you don't even press the buttons. You just see sequences like after this image, I often see this image. After this image, I often see, I often see uh, the next image. So you can learn the transition probabilities from S to S prime without any action so far. But you know about these branching probabilities. And now in a second session, the player of this game is told that actually, if you arrive at this state, you get zero cent reward. But if you arrive at the other state, you would get 25 cent. And now, because you know the neighborhood relations, you know these branching ratios, you know how to get from S to S prime and finally to a final state down here, you can play out the game in your mind. You can estimate the Q values of the different transitions and take the decision such that you are most likely to get a reward. Which means in a model-based reinforcement learning paradigm, you can explore potential future paths in your mind. So that even after a single trial or even before the first trial, you already know with this information, well, the best thing is, well, I should try to get to this bluish picture that gives me 25 cent. To summarize, Standard algorithms that we have seen, like SAHSA, Q-learning, policy gradient, act, uh, actor critic architectures that combine policy gradient with TD learning, you basically, with a current state, at a current position, you just choose the next action. There's no planning. And this gives difficulties if the reward schedule changes. And the advantages of model-based reinforcement learning are three. The first one is the agent can readapt if the reward scheme changes. 
Second, the agent can explore potential future paths in its mind. So it can plan an action path into the future just by playing it out in the future. And this is interesting for planning actions in a game, for example. And the same idea of playing out in the model without actually playing it in the game can also be used to update Q values in the background. Without playing five more sequences, you can play the sequences in the model in the background. 